call recording is now on so um for quality assurance reasons and also so you can catch up if anyone's missed it or you can go over um, the presentation again Can you see the presentation? Yes, yeah, I see. Yeah, great, okay. Just let me know if you can't hear anything that I'm saying, um, because I'll just go through the presentation. I'll just give it a couple more minutes and then we'll make a start. Okay. Right, so today we're going to go through 3.23, and the aim is to understand the principles of managing and leading teams in organisations. So I'm just going to go through the grading criteria. For a pass, 4.1 states, describe the stages of team development, and that's for a pass. If you were aiming for a merit, it says explain explain why it may be appropriate to use different leadership and motivational styles in different situations. And then for distinction, it says evaluate how motivational theories are used in business to motiv mot uh, motivate employers. Sorry. Evaluate the impact of different leadership styles on employees. So, to address the first learning outcome, we go to Tuckman 1965. Um, Tuckman suggests there are um, four stages of development within a group that each group will go through. Um, first of all, he suggests that they go through forming. Um, the, group, the group will start to come together have anxiety and uncertainties, um, cautious with their behaviour, desire to be accepted by all members of the group, conflict, controversy, controversy and personal opinions are avoided at this time. Then it goes, then he thinks if that's been successful, then the next stage will become storming. Relationships between team members will be made or broken and may not recover. If they don't recover, they'll stay in that stage. Um, start suggesting task ideas. Look for a leader within the group. There'll be power struggles. Clarity of purpose increase, but plenty of uncertainties persist. And then Tuckman suggests that they'll go through this stage, which is the norming stage. Agreement from the team, responding well to the leader. Uh, roles and responsibilities are clear and accepted. Major decisions are made by group agreements. And then the last stage is the performing stage. So we suggest that the team has a shared vision. The leader can step back as the team can stand on their own two feet, focused on achieving their goals. The team requires delegated tasks and projects from the leader although the team is capable of supporting each other. So to address that first learning outcome, you just talk about um, Tuckman's um, theory that would um, obviously address that first learning outcome. And it's up to you if you go for a past merit or distinction dependent which one you decide to um, challenge within your work. And then the next learning outcome do you have any questions actually on that first learning outcome? That's all right. no. Sorry? 
That's all right, no question. No questions, okay. Um, and then it's 4.2, which states, carry out an analysis to determine own and others' roles within a team. So if you go on Moodle, there is um, Honey and Mumford um, learning styles questionnaire. So you need to fill that in. And it, um, you fill it in, and it's just basically ticks. So you tick the tick sheet, and then you um, tally them all up, and it'll tell you um, what you are. It's an analyst, what you are, what kind of personality sh traits you show within a team. So we'll go through the ones that Belbin suggests that somebody may be. Um, what is a team role? Um, he suggests that it's a tendency to behave contribute and relate with others in a particular way. Um, Belbin's team roles describe the pattern of behaviour that characterise one person's behaviour in relationship to another in facilitating the progress of a team. So basically it suggests that how others behave, how you behave will affect other people's behaviours. So you'll all bounce off each other or you'll, you'll all get on or you'll all argue. It's going to have a knock-on effect. Um, Belbin suggests that um, the action roles fall into three domains. One is a shaper, one is an implementer, and one is a complete finisher. The shaper, um, challenging dynamic, thrives on pressure, the drive and courage to overcome obstacles. However, prone to uh, being angry, deliberate, um, on purpose, um, offends people's feelings. So for that one, there's like pros and cons. I think I put pros and cons in each of them. Uh, the next one is the implementer, uh, disciplined, reliable, um, and efficient, turns ideas into practical actions, however, can be inflex inflexible and um, slow to respond to new possibilities. So basically saying that they can be stuck in their ways. And then the next one is the completer finisher. Painstaking, um, anxious, search out errors, um, but delivers on time, um, can worry, um, reluctant to delegate, so basically, um, doesn't like to um, doesn't really like to work as part of a team. Would rather all the responsibility lie with them. In addition to this, um, Belbin states that people have um, oriented roles, such as a coordinator, a team worker, or a resource investigator. Um, these are all on um, what I said before, they're going to be all online and it'll tell you what you come out as, what traits that's saying. But it's all, um, you know, you can argue the fact that if you did this test on different days, um, influences might change. It might be the fact that you're having a bad day. It might be the fact you've had a lack of sleep. So if you did it on a Monday, it might come out as a certain um, idea saying that you are a team worker or your complete finisher and then it might say on another day that your roles have changed so it gives you an indication but like I say it can be changeable so the coordinator is mature confident a good chairperson as goals promotes decision making delegates well however can be seen as man manipulative offloads personal work um, the team worker um, can be diplomatic, listens, um, builds, averts friction, but can be indecis indecisive in crunch situations. And then you've got the resource investigator, co cooperative, mild, uh, diplomatic, listens, builds, averts friction, um, indecisive when in certain situations again and then and then it goes on to several roles 
which Belbin again suggests that these roles can be um, a plant, um, a monitor evaluator or a specialist. And then it just goes through what each of one of these are. So um, creative, imaginative, solve difficult problems, um, preoccupied to communicate effectively. So as you can see, as I'm going through these, I am doing a for and against. That is um, more or less taking your mark up more because if you're doing a for and against, you're arguing, you're not just basically explaining what it is, you're showing the good side and the bad side, the pros, the cons, the strengths, the weaknesses. So that's what you need to do throughout all of them. Just say like, show that you've understood, but show an analysis where you've sort of um, understood it a bit more in depth. That's what gets you the higher mark. And then if you go on to um, 4.3, it states assess three motivation, motivation theories. So I've given you three, but you don't necessarily have to go with these three. You can think of another three. These are the ones that I've just actually put on the power slide so that I can go through them. So we've got Maslow's, uh, Mas Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But I've linked a YouTube clip on there also, so if you want to look through that to try and gain an understanding of what he suggests that are a motivation for managers, for staff um, within business. So Maslow hierarchy of needs. The level of the hierarchy includes the physical needs, so food, water, shelter. So is the environment meeting the physiological needs? And then you've got safety needs. Um, a safe working environment. So that would be um, no bullying in, within work, uh, anti-discrimination, um, health and safety, um, things that probably link into your policies and procedures. Um, also, we've got social needs, feeling wanted, a sense of belonging within the company, part of the team. And then it goes on to um, esteem needs. So self-respected, a level of status within the company. And then it goes on to the highest part of the hierarchy, which is self-actualization. So the inter intellectual needs, are they being fulfilled? Uh, fulfilling your potential, achieve, achieving targets. Um, so that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then it goes on to Hertzberg. Um, again, I've put a YouTube clip up. So hopefully you could look at that and try and gain an understanding how you interpret it. Um, so he suggests that it depends on how interesting the work is, that's going to be motivation for people, how much opportunity it gives for extra responsibility. He suggests that people want the extra responsibility within a business, recognition and promotion, um, responsible level of pay, safe working conditions, which is similar to what Maslow states to. And then it goes on to McGregor. Um, so McGregor suggests that there's theory X and theory Y. Um, theory X workers, let me just move this slide up. He's still hearing me okay. Hello? Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's still fun. Oh, right, okay. I was just checking. Sorry. Just feel free to um, yeah. ask me anything as we're going through. Okay. Um, yeah, so we've got McGregor, and he suggests that um, an ex theory worker could be described as follows. Individuals who dislike work and avoid it where possible. Individuals who lack ambition, dislike responsibility, and prefer to be led. Individuals who desire security. The management implications for Fairy X workers were that to achieve organization objectives, a business would need to impose a management system for control and punishment. So that's one of the theories. And then is theory is very why um consider effort at work just like rest or play 
Um, individuals who seek responsibility if they're motivated. The management implications for Theory X workers are that to achieve organisational objective, rewards of varying kinds and likely to be most popular motivator. The challenge for management with Theory Y workers is to create a working environment or culture where the workers can show and develop their creativity. So that is all, that is giving you three, which goes back to um, 4.3. So within that, you've just got to talk about three motivational theories, just show that you've understood exactly what three are, and you can put supportive arguments in there, and um, you can put arguments against it too. And then we go on to 4.4 which states, describe different types of leadership styles. So we've got the authorian, democratic, lies and fair, transactional, transformational. So, um, let me just move it. So these are Lewin's leadership styles. So if we go to the first one, the Orpharian one, it states, uh, make decisions without consulting their team members, even if their input could be useful. And um, there is no need for team input, can lead to high staff turnover and high levels of staff absence. So basically, they like to do things on their own and anyone else's um, opinions or suggestions are just not valid. However, because that is giving a downside, there may be upsides to that because sometimes if it's some high risk within business, do you really want to be asking everyone else's opinion? Could it be sometimes maybe it has got a plus, even though that's telling you the cons, it may be good to put pros in there too. And then you've got the democratic leaders. Um, make final decisions, but include their team in the final, in decision making, sorry. They encourage creativity. Team members tend to have high job satisfaction. Not always effective style when you need to make a quick decision. And then you've got laser fair, which leaders give their staff a lot of freedom in how they do their work. Let me just move that up so you can see it. Um, they provide support with resources and advice if needed. They tend to have high job satisfaction, can show challenges if staff don't manage their time well or if they don't have um, knowledge, skills, self-motivation to do their work effectively. And then, let me see one here transformational leaders um, so this is a suggestion that they um, have high emotional intelligence they have a shared vision the self-aware the good communicators um, the empathic so then again um, that one sounds like it's showing all the good side so obviously that's the pros so within there you can state however you know um, maybe there is weaknesses within this theory and explain why there could be weaknesses how could that theory be good so you could give an example how it could be good and how it could potentially be bad and then the last one is the trans uh, transactional leaders so employees are motivated by reward and punishment um, they obey orders to their superior, um, not self-motivated. They have to be closely monitored and controlled to get the work done from them. So that is actually all them learning outcomes. And that, with that information on there, that would actually address all the learning outcomes. Like I said before, what level you get it to, you just look at the grading criteria on here that states path, merit, and distinction, and determine what bits you're going to include within your assignment to get your mark. And don't forget to go on um, Honey and Mumford to do the learning styles questionnaire, because that's for, um, I think it's 4.2. 
to le- address that learning outcome and um, keep it in line with the Harvard refer- referencing system. Sorry. And if you have any questions, you can email me at caroline at ukversity.co.uk. Um, do you have any questions why I'm on now? Anything that you want me to run through or go over? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sorry? Is, uh, that's fine. Everything is uh, clear. But uh, how to get the material based on this topic? Say that again. Sorry? How to find the material oh, right. based on this topic? All right. Okay. That's great. Um, yeah, so um, no questions or anything, and yet, um, thank you for attending today's session. Bye. No, stop.